Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to check in on you and give you a word of encouragement. Okay, this is a time we need to reset. It's time to reboot, recharge, replan ourselves. The question that we have to navigate today is this. What does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus? What is our mission? What are we to be about, right? What should be our focus? What should be our drive? Now, when we look at the life of Jesus, we can recognize that he was in complete obedience to the Father. I love it. As you go through the Gospels, you can recognize that Jesus was all about the Father's mission. And I'm thankful to God because of what Jesus did, because I have a renewed spirit. I've been transformed. We have been transformed. That's why I'm always thinking, let's focus on Jesus. Let's follow Jesus. But the key characteristics that we want to think about is this. Jesus was all about the Father's mission. He did everything in the context of God's will. And not only that, he was building a bridge. His whole mission was to bring you and me back in a relationship with God because that makes sense. Because we were stolen away from God by Satan because of his schemes. And we kind of just follow the lead of the deceiver. Okay. And not only was Jesus obedient, not only was he building a bridge, we got to think about what did it cost Jesus to get us back in a relationship with him? It cost him his very life. Now, when we look at the nature of God, we can recognize he's a God of love, a God of understanding, and he was willing to give up his only son. That tells us love. That shows us that God values mankind. He values you. He values me. He values people. We have to recognize the sad reality. The sad reality is that we're at war. Let me read a couple of verses to get us started on our thought. In 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 8, Peter is talking to a group of followers of Jesus, and he's saying, followers of Jesus, disciples of Jesus, okay? Men and women that submit to God's authority, be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Did you catch it? The sad reality is this. Satan is out there hunting us down. He's seeking to destroy your life, my life, and the lives around other people because he has no value in humankind. He doesn't bring value. He doesn't give dignity. He doesn't show love. He's here to destroy mankind because he's a deceiver and he is evil trying to destroy not only our lives, but our faith in God. And it's very easy to fall into that trap. Let me read another verse to you. It's actually found in Ephesians, Ephesians 6, verse 11 through 12. It says this, Paul is talking to a group of disciples, people that are submission to God's authority. He's saying this, put on the full full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil. Did you catch it? The devil, he's at, he's at war with you. He's at war with me. He's at war with war with everybody. And in verse 12, it says this for our struggle is not against flesh and blood to catch it. It's not against flesh and blood people, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our war isn't with flesh. It's not with people. It's with the person behind the deceit of the person. Did you catch it? When I was younger, before I was a follower of Jesus, what was I producing? My life was all about Tony and it was about my will, my greed, my lust, my desire. But who deceived me into that? Satan. I was loyal to him because I was just being rebellious to God. And then I changed lordship, submitted to God, submitted to his authority. I'm like, rebuild me, transform me. And my goal is to be the best or appointing people to him because that is what God desires disciples to do right? So when you think about as a disciple, our purpose is to glorify God, right? When we look at Jesus, we can follow his lead. Jesus wasn't fighting the people. He was fighting the person behind or the spiritual forces behind the people that were causing ruckus, that were creating havoc. It's not the person. It's the sin. It's the deceiver. It's the spiritual beings at war. You have to recognize that the sad reality is that Satan is trying to destroy our lives. He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy me. He's just trying to destroy people. And God's like, I can't have that. God's like, no, it's not what I'm about. I'm about loving mankind. There's someone trying to destroy us. And Jesus is trying to redeem us, protect us. He's the ultimate war veteran protecting mankind. I love it. What do we do? What is our response, right? Check this out in Joshua 1.9. I love this. This is getting ready for Joshua and, and Caleb. They're getting ready to go into the promised land. And this is God speaking to them. And he says, have I not commanded you, be strong, be courageous, don't be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Did you catch it? As disciples of Jesus, we don't fly solo. We have a God that breathed the sun and the stars into existence, a powerful, redeeming, amazing God that has our backs. He's the one that part of the Red Sea, right? He was the one that raised Lazarus from the dead. He's the one that took that demon-possessed man, restored him, transformed him. 
God is powerful, okay? I get this imagery of, I saw this picture on Instagram a while ago, and I, sh I, I should have kept it. It was pretty cool. It was a little lion. It was a baby lion, and it's, he's kind of crouched down, and it, it said me on the caption. And then right behind it is this massive lion, and it said God, meaning he has our backs. As followers of Jesus, we don't fly solo. And God's saying, be courageous, be strong. Uh, what does he say? Don't be, be discouraged. The Lord, creator, God, mighty, warrior, powerful king, prince of peace, has your back, my back. Remember, we don't fly solo. We're not alone. Check this out. In Psalms 55, verse 22, this is the psalmist, and he's saying, cast your cares on the Lord. You have anxieties? Talk to him. You have fears? Talk to him. You have concerns? Talk to him. Cast everything on him. He will sustain you. He will never let, you, the, he will never let the righteous be shaken. Did you catch it? We live in a world that's in utter chaos right now. So what are we doing? We need to sit down with Jesus and hang on to him because we're on a ride. And Jesus is saying, I have your back. I will be with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. You have concerns. You have fears. Cast them on Jesus. Cast them on God because we know that he can take care of them. Let's say things don't work out for us, but we have faith knowing that there's hope in heaven, right? Remember, we're not alone. Remember, Satan is trying to destroy us, destroy you, destroy me. He's trying to deceive us. He's trying to redirect our focus, redirect our mindset. He wants to pin people against people. And Jesus is saying, our, our war is not against people. It's against the evil behind the deceit. Satan. Satan. So what do we do as disciples of Jesus? Recognize that God is with us. We're not alone. He's victorious. He's strong. He's powerful. And we are under his, his will. How awesome is that? And he says, cast your cares on me. I'll take care of you. I'll sustain you. I'll be there to help you. You have fears? Let me help you overcome those fears. You have anxiety? Let me help you overcome those anxiety. We have no idea where we're going in our government. I will help you. God is in control. Remember, we have to recognize that. So Satan is out there to destroy us. He's trying to deceive us. He's trying to rip us apart. Trying to gain, get us to lack trust in God. To focus on what's happening in the flesh and what's happening in society. Right? And then we see a transition in Joshua and saying, trust me, don't be discouraged, be courageous, take your stand, we represent Jesus, give me your, not me, Jesus, give the king our concerns and he will sustain us. That's a promise. That is a promise. I will sustain you. Question is I have to ask you is this, who's on the throne? Who's on the throne? Who's in charge? Man, absolutely not. Not at all. Who's in charge? God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. He's king. He's in charge. Things will happen, but the greater king, he has a plan. He has a mission. He's doing something. Got to hang in there. Can't be discouraged. Can't give up. Can't back down. Got to keep submission. Got to keep focused on Jesus. Focus on the king. Focus on the cross. Focus on the resurrection, right? Every step we take, we have to be the fingerprints of Jesus. Every step we take, we have to have energy that walks with God and saying, God is victorious. He has our backs. Remember who's on the throne. In Galatians, I want to read this verse to you. It says, in Galatians 3.26, it says, So in Christ Jesus, you're all called children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized in Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. You were clothed in the protection of Christ. Check out this verse also. 2 Timothy one seven it says, for the spirit God gave us is not, does not make us timid, fearful, shaken, scared. He gave us a spirit of power, love, self-discipline. The spirit that God gave us is not weakness. Jesus is not weak. He's not a coward. God is not weak at all. And he says, you represent me. Trust me. I gave you a spirit not to be scared, but to have a spirit of power, self-discipline, love, no timidness, standing, recognizing whose we are and who we represent. And that's our Savior. That's our King. That's our Redeemer, Jesus. We have to let that sink in, okay? We have to remember who's on the throne, who is in charge. God. Sometimes we can't understand what's happening. That's okay. All we can do is trust, right? All we can do is be faithful. All we can do is saying, God, I have no idea what's happening, what's going on, but I trust you. I will submit to you. I'm in prayer like crazy. We're praying, 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 reading, 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 studying. We have no idea what's going on, but we trust in the fact that Jesus and God are in control. We have no idea what, they're, what they are doing, but as followers of the king, we will follow his lead. 
Remember, Satan is trying to destroy us. Our response is to follow Jesus, hang on to him. He gave us a spirit, not of timidness, but of power to represent him, to stand strong. So the question is this, what is our mission? As disciples, what is our mission? What are we trying to promote? The answer is Jesus to everything, right? Everything that happens in society can be transformed and fixed by Jesus' counsel, his wisdom, and his insight. We just have to get it in us, right? Yes. So what is our mission? Check this out. Romans 1.16. Love this verse. Paul saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the death, burial, and resurrection. I'm not ashamed of being a disciple of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus transforms people, right? Because of God, because of Jesus, there's value in mankind. You remove God from society, we will go back to the dark ages. It's going to happen. Paul's like, I'm not ashamed of anything. Anything that represents Jesus, he's not weak, right? He's, not, he's meek, but he's not weak. <laughs> uh, good phrase. Meekness isn't weakness, but I'll keep going, okay? So in Romans 1.16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the, the, to the Jew, then to the Gentile. If more men and women submit to the authority of God and saying, you know what, whatever he says, go, and I will live out his wisdom, meaning I'll be transformed, whatever Jesus says, I'll do, meaning if I'm living this lifestyle and Jesus says, knock it off, like, okay, okay, I will, I'll go this way, right? So who do we represent? Jesus. What is our mission? Following Jesus, right? Following his calling. Being the men and women God desires us to be. We're not ashamed of the gospel. God didn't give us a spirit of weakness, not of timidity, but of power, right? Of self-control, of love. That's what our world needs, love. The world needs Jesus, and we need to represent him the best. Now, this is the verse I want you to be thinking about, okay? As disciples of Jesus, who do we represent? Christ. What should be our mission? Jesus in his kingdom. What should we be overflowing in our speech and the things we're talking about? Jesus is the answer to everything. It is. It helps us be better men, better women. Treats, uh, shows us and tells us how to respect people, love people, serve people, help people. Okay, I love this. Check this out in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says this. Then Jesus came to the disciples, followers of Jesus, people that are submission in submission to Jesus' kingship. He says, this is your mission. I'm a follower of Jesus. What am I representing? This is my mission. You claim the name Christ. This is our mission. If we're not fulfilling this mission, you got to ask yourself, who's Lord? Who's Lord of our lives? We can... I, it's very easy to put Jesus on as an accessory. But Jesus is not an accessory. He is Lord. We need to change. He doesn't change. Right? It's difficult. But he gives us a spirit of power, a spirit of self-control, right? A spirit of love. We can do this. Check this out. I need to read it. I'm getting, I'm going everywhere. But let's get back to the text. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says this. Then Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Did you catch it? Who has authority? Jesus, I need to repeat it. All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. I'm happy he's in charge. I'm happy he came to give grace because judgment will come. I want to be on his side when that happens, right? Man, okay, let's keep going. 19, it says this. Therefore, this is grace that God is extending to mankind. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commend you, and show I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is grace that God has given mankind in saying, he understands that there is a deceiver that is manipulating, controlling people, and he's saying, when we go and tell people about God's kingdom and his glory, transformation will occur. The war is already won, because people are, trying, are being deceived by Satan, and he's saying, I want you to go make an impact. Be a fingerprint of Jesus. Go and teach the very things that will create faith, that will help people look at Jesus to find a solution to what's happening today. What's happening with the flesh and fall of sin. What's happening with the social injustices. What's happening with how people view people, right? What's happening in the sex trafficking area, right? All this evil, more men and women submit to God's authority will create a culture of love will create a culture of acceptance and it will hold everybody accountable to the sin that they are gratifying. So go make disciples, baptize them. God will give them the spirit to transform them and teach them everything. 
It's very easy to take stances on things we don't understand biblically. It's something to think about. But this is what I want to leave you with. If more people follow Jesus, what will it produce? Men, when we follow Jesus, Jesus teaches us what it means to be a godly man. How to love our wives, how to love our kids, right? How to work. We were created to work. We were created to produce something good. Are you producing something good? Are you looking out for your family and saying, I want to build them up. I want to raise them up. I want to encourage them. I want to be the best arrow pointing my family to Jesus. If not, time to change, right? Women, when we think about the role that you play, you are so valuable to the kingdom. You are so powerful. You are valued. You are needed. We need you to step into the role that God gave you and said, we need women of strength to point people to Jesus, to point your families to Jesus, right? If more men and women submit to the authority of God, it will produce love. It will produce accountability. God is the ultimate authority and he's giving us wisdom and we need to adopt that wisdom and live in that wisdom. Why? Because Satan is out there trying to deceive you, trying to deceive me, trying to deceive the world. We can see it. And God's like, I'm the answer. He's the king, right? He's in charge. We just need to listen. So what does following Jesus produce? Pushing the darkness back. Because Jesus calls out the sin, calls out the greed, calls out the selfishness, says, stop. Say no, walk the other way, and I'll rebuild you. It takes great strength to come to Jesus and allow him to transform you. It's a lot. It's You're a weaker person if you don't seek counsel, if you don't allow transformation to occur. Because it takes great courage to follow God and submit to real authority, true authority, and to be the men and women God he want, wants us to be. So I need to conclude this. This is 19 minutes, okay? Sorry, guys, I was trying to keep it eight. Yeah, right. Me talking with this, all this excitement won't happen. So the question I want you to be thinking about is this. So what is our mission? What are we to promote? What are we to be known for? Disciples that love Jesus and represent Jesus. Be known for God's kingdom. Be known for his love. Be known for, for the love that is overflowing in mankind. I'm, seriously, think about it. The more people that follow Jesus, the more men and women will be accountable to be respectful, kind, loving, selfless. Matt is actually doing a sermon series on Sunday morning. He's talking about what does it mean to live under kingdom living. If we have to be reminded of Matthew 5, 6, and 7 about kingdom living, read it. That's what a disciple is. That's what we are to promote. That's what we are to stand by. So the question you have to be thinking about is this. Are you being the best arrows pointing people to Jesus? Is everything that we say bringing more glory to God? Is everything that we're doing, recruiting people into God's kingdom, talking about things of value of today's social injustices and the struggles that's not taking place, are we bringing God's wisdom into it or our opinion? We have to allow God's truths to go everywhere because we represent him. The best authority that we can stand by is this, the Bible. So we have to know this well so that as we are loving and living and coaching and mentoring and encouraging and, and equipping, whatever the case may be, we can do it through truth, not through our own subjective beliefs, but objective beliefs given to us by God. Remember this. God loves you. God values you. Remember what it cost him to get us back into his kingdom. We represent him. If more men and women submitted to his rule and authority, our world would be very different. So I'm prayerful. I'm excited. God's good. God's king. He's savior. Hope you guys are doing well. Love you. Be encouraged. Remember, God gave us a spirit of strength and power, not timidity. Hang in there. We got this. God is in control. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.